Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rainbows. I was asked how I would make a gingerbread house ornament with an XCS, so here's that tutorial. I speak sort of quickly, so you can go to your YouTube settings, playback speed, and choose anything above normal to slow this down. Again, you can just go to that little cog and choose playback speed. So what I'm going to start with is a rectangle, easy enough, and you can make any size rectangle, any shape rectangle, it doesn't matter. Then I go to the basic shapes menu and make a triangle. Now I will not be using the menu a lot for any shapes, I usually just use my computer keyboard. I'm using the unlock aspect ratio to change each of these shapes now. So I'm making the triangle a little bit squattier, I'll be making the base of the uh, rectangle a little bit shorter and again this is your personal preference I am gonna put everything to engrave so you can see it a little easier I always recommend rounding off any of the turns where the laser will go and that means not only these turns in the triangle but also in the rectangle so if you see the triangle all has these nice rounded edges but our square needs some help or rectangle come up here right here and we're going to round off these corners again how much you put the value there is going to depend on what you want i'm just using two to do a small and slight little round i'm going to highlight both horizontally center them and now it's time to get building. I'm actually going to um, squash this down a little bit more because I'm going to hit R on my keyboard, add a rectangle again. That is the width of the base of the triangle. I'm going to round off those corners at the same measurement of two. And then I'm going to highlight the rectangle at the bottom and the house shape, and I'm going to align those to the bottom and horizontally center everything. All right, that looks pretty decent as a start. I'm going to zoom in by using Command or Control Plus, but you can use the uh, zoom at the bottom as well. I hit R on my keyboard because I want another rectangle. Again, I rounded those corners to two and set it to engrave before I positioned a chimney. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's just whatever design you want to make. It's all basic shapes. So now that we have our basic shape, I'm going to come over here to the canvases and I'm going to call this the elements. Then I'm going to create another one called working. So if I make a big bad mistake, I want to have this original design. So I'm going to copy it all and paste it all into working, leaving that original shape by itself, uncombined or not combined. So now I'm going to highlight everything here and I'm going to combine it. <laughs> see, I'm going to go into the layers panel. You can see now instead of all of those different shapes, we just have one vector. I'm going to copy and paste that off to the side in case I profoundly mess that up later. I'm just turning it to no output. I'm going to change the color of this one so that you know I'll be working in blues and reds. That's all. All right, now we have our basic gingerbread shape, right? Let's make some extras. I hit R on my keyboard, make a rectangle square-ish shape, make another one copying the same two as my corner radius and then I just make two little rectangles combine those after centering them and that's going to be the inside of my window pane I'm going to copy and paste this one now you can expand it this way or you can add an outline I'm just going to drag it up I'm going to change this one to red I'm also going to end up bringing this to the front which is this menu here I'm going to horizontally and vertically center these two and then I'm going to subtract the red one from the uh, black one in just a second. Let me just position all this Now this one here is a vector shape so you can see I'm going to mess with that in just a second I'm just horizontally and aligning everything. Okay, so the very first thing this cross is a vector shape and we are gonna lock it You don't have to make it go away It's just that we want to only mess with the two squares and subtract the red one from the black one unlock the vector of the window pane select everything and combine it there's our little window you can adjust it hold shift and adjust it whatever to make a door I'm creating a rectangle with a corner radius of two and then I'm going to create a circle and I'm just going to horizontally center both of those before I move this circle only up so that it creates a nice little rounded top door this is a very basic design you can make any design you want I'm going to combine those two shapes, change it to engrave so you can see it a little better. There you go. And there's my door. And there's my window. Easy, right? So 
we're not done because right now we have a floating door, a floating window, and a single layer. So let's make another layer. I'm going to copy and add an outline. Okay, that's it. Add an outline. See that? We're going to hit confirm. Now, this is two pieces. This is not one piece anymore. Okay, if you dragged off one, um, let me get in a little here. I'm just zooming in so you can see it a little better. But you see, if you just drag off one, you have two pieces. Now, if you wanted to cut out the front from that outline, you can't watch. Oh, we don't do that. Yes, you do. Just change the outline to engrave, change it to another color. You don't have to do this part, but you do have to do this part, which is move it to the back. Now you select both of them and subtract. Now we have only the outline, but we're not done because now these two shapes do not match in size. So we're going to copy and paste that, bring it over to our original house, center those. And now we can combine those two, not the door or the window, just the outline and the house. Now they're going to be the same size. Okay. So let's mess with this outline a bit. I'm going to bring it to the front so we can see it and then you can position it manually or be the lazy girl like I am horizontally and vertically align it. All right, we're not done because I need to make a little bit better this stuff over here. So I'm going to lock the aspect ratio for the window and I'm actually going to increase the door size. I'm going to add some frosting and I'm going to add some snow at the bottom. All of those things are within your reach and it's easy to do. Okay. Just taking a bit of a breather here. I'm going to tell you the vector tool is going to be a good friend of yours. Don't get scared. So you can adjust the size of the door both with the transform controls, but always consider the outline. So the outline is just my faster way of doing things. I'm lazy, so I try and always figure out the faster way. <laughs> So you can see I'm going to change that outline to purple, change it to engrave, send this one layer backward behind the window, another layer backward. There you go, behind the door. And now I'm just going to cut those out from each other so I only have the door outline. Okay? And that's going to look a little better, I promise. So now we have the outline, we have the door outline, we have the window outline. I'm going to combine all of those. Bloop. All combined. Isn't that nice? Now it's just floating. So let's give it some structure here, shall we? I'm going to come over to the vector tool. It's the one that looks like a fountain pen. You're going to just start clicking. If you've never used this tool, it's going to go wrong. Just know that it's going to go wrong. I'm going to make a little jagged edge here, stopping in the middle. You can see the blue line that comes up when you get to the middle. Now I'm going to end that shape and close it and hit done. Now I'm going to change the color, make it engraved so you can see. That doesn't look like it, but if you double click or hit the edit menu at the top and you start messing with these nodes, I'm just double clicking. There is a node menu up at the top. You can see every time I double click something, the little gray highlight on the nodes, the left of simplify comes up and I'm just moving these nodes around. So it looks a little bit more like frosting instead of jagged little, you know, cuts. See? Now, are we done? No, because our frosting is off the edge of our house, so let's fix that. I'm going to double click again and move just this one node a little bit in. Okay? Is it perfect? No. Are we going to fix it? Yes. So in order to fix it, we're first going to copy it. We're going to flip it horizontally, move it to the right, and we're going to make sure those two pieces touch and they are aligned. And once they are, right up here, see that? We can combine them by selecting them both and hit Unite Combine. Now, I know it's messed up. Give me a second. I'm going to select everything and connect it. Now, why? Because I want this part over here to be adjusted. The eye doesn't like this. So we're going to go into edit node. Even though we didn't make this out of nodes or the vector tool, we can edit the nodes inside of any single shape. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. This is going to make it look a little easier on the eye. You can even delete little bump offs like this. And now our hearts are happy. See how easy that is? Basic shapes. <gasps> see, when I hover over that blue, you see all those little light blue things? You're going to go in and do what's called node cleanup. When we combined all of our pieces, there were some empty pieces. So we're just going to highlight and delete everything that doesn't belong in the center. We want one single cutout. That's all. Hit done. And now that piece is ready to go. This piece is almost ready to go. 
Now, again, all of this frosting, all of the doors, the windows, it's optional, but I want snowy frosting at the bottom. So again, I'm gonna go into the vector tool right over my design because you are not messing with the original design, right? But you're using the original design to make a jagged little edgy cutout thingy. And again, we're gonna close it, so we're just gonna go all the way around. Hit done. I'm gonna change that to a different color, hit engrave, and it's gonna look like a hot mess. But we know we can come into the edit tool double click or use the node management menu at the top to the left of simplify and we can just mess with this a little until our hearts are happy you can undo anything by the way by hitting the undo button or command z or control z look at that Ooh, we gotta fix some stuff right so let's go back into edit we're gonna fix that node right there boop just hit it and then i also have to fix this one over here i think we're good we're good now I'm going to combine that with my red outline. And we're happy. So I am now actually going to uh, also add a doorknob. Why? I don't know. Why not? So I'm going to make a circle and combine that with that as well. Are we done? We're not. We have to make a hanger. So I'm going to create two circles. I'm going to make them both engraved so you can see them. Make it one a different color just because, you know, one is a whole lot smaller. Now we're going to align those centered to horizontal and vertical planes, and then we're just going to subtract them out from another, and there's our hanger. But we need two of them. So I'm going to copy it and paste it, change one to blue, highlight both, center align horizontally and vertically. Now I'm going to move them up. Now, a lot of people get confused on this, but this is where our layers panel is awesome. So over in the layers panel, you can see I have my blue and my red circles over here. I'm gonna lock one, turn it off, and then I'm just gonna highlight the red circle and the red layer, and I'm gonna combine them. Now I'm gonna turn off the red, turn on the blue, and combine those two blues. Now we have two layers, a red and a blue. That's all we need. And now our ornament is done. I can delete that, save my file, if you have any questions about what to design or what to do, let me know and I'll show you how to do it within the XCS software. I love designing and I hope you found this helpful. Please like, share, and subscribe.